Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch and today we're revisiting an application I covered about a year and a half ago. It's called Vroid Studio or Vroid Studio. I have no idea which of the two is correct, but I'm going to go with Vroid for the rest of this video. And this is a product out of Japan. It is completely free and essentially you can think of this as uh, Daz or Poser or Make Human for anime characters. And that's exactly what it does. It's almost like a video game creator style. Uh, your character is created in here, you can move them around in the scene and navigate. And then you can control various different parts of their, so for example, we're here right now in the face editor, and using a bunch of sliders, we can control how the face looks. If we want to move the eyes, we can move the eyes. If we want to change the proximity of the eyes, we can change the proximity of the eyes. It goes on and on, and we've got it, eyebrows, we've got nose, mouth, ears, contour, so we can make massive changes to our character, but it's a very, very simple program to get the basics down on. And then on top of that, there's also all of the texture maps that are being generated behind the scenes. We can go ahead and switch into texture mode, and you'll see here we actually even get a full UV painter. So this is the skin controlling our character. Let me just zoom in a little bit, and I'll show you. Like so, and we have layers. We've got it broken down into different categories. So we've got the eyes, we've got the eyebrows, base color we can change out. So if we wanted to make the eyebrows uh, purple, we can go ahead and do so like that. Or we can actually come right over here and paint using a variety of different brushes directly on our face. So let's put some, some blue under eye, maybe not as full. So I'm turning this poor girl into a football player. And as you see, you've got full UV texture support for the underlying textures controlling how this character looks. So you can either use a bunch of sliders or you can drop down and do a whole lot of detail uh, with the painting program that's built into this. Same time, you've got the hair editor. I will be honest, I have never made sense of this guy. Um, it is for painting hair on here, but as you can see, it is not 100% translated. You can do things, so there's presets, but there's nothing here. I've got no idea how any of this particular stuff works, but you can go ahead and create new hairs. So we want to add new hair onto our mesh, we can do so. And then there's also options for shaping it, or I can retouch it and grab the different uh, contours of our hair, like so. And we can use this to basically create anime style hairdos pretty easily. And then on we go over here, body editor is what you expect, but it is for the full character body. You can break it down to either the whole body, so we can do things like change the shortness, or the height, and you'll notice they're, they're offsetting or opposite sliders. So what I can do, for example, is do 100% short and 100% tall, and then I'll end up with somewhere in the middle. Um, and then on top of that, we break it down to individual categories. I can't imagine anyone would ever come in here, but you see you've got controls over various different things. You can change the leg height, leg length, uh, up and down. Uh, the head, we can just, we could actually make her head comedically large if we so wished, or comedically small, like that. If that was the style you were going for in your game, it is very, very easy to accomplish in Vroid. And then we got into the clothing editor. Now, this is one of those things I've been trying to research and I have not succeeded at. I don't know how to import new clothing. And that's always one of the challenges with things like Make Human, Daz, Poser, and so on. There's this convoluted process of bringing in static meshes that are defined correctly for um, dressing your characters. And I kind of did some research on this and I could not find anything immediate. But part of the reason, and I'll segue to that right now, Vroid is very much not an English first product. Uh, you probably noticed over here when we were doing the hair that a lot of it was not in English characters. And that is because this is, again, this is, I believe, a Japanese product. And you will find if you scroll down here, uh, the download link is here. So I will link you to this so you can find this and figure out how to download. It is at studio.vroid.com forward slash downroid, down, downroid, download. Uh, but again, the challenge is going to be a lot of the documentation and the materials and all of that stuff out there is 100% in Japanese. So head on back over here. We can kind of continue. So we can go from uh, the clothing editor. We can do like a one piece dress and go to a school uniform. And then there's a pants option, school uniform. So these are the presets that ship with it. But again, in my research, I couldn't actually figure out how to um, populate these meshes and bring in new details. Uh, but And then this base mesh, which I'm not going to click to not get in trouble with YouTube, that will give you basically a non-dressed character. And then once you've done that, you can go over here to your general editor. Uh, this is sort of things like lighting in the scene and um, eye excursion, so how the character is going to look, which can actually get a little creepy when you play with it but you can track how the eyes track and so on. And then finally, we go into the camera editor slash exporter. And this is where you can do some really cool things. Like you can mix in facial expressions. Uh, they're all bone weighted in there. There's also some animations here. So if we wanted to give her a smile, we could smile. We can make her sad. So, so there's a number of different uh, facial expressions available in here. You can also change up the way the eyebrows work. So we can have 
sad eyebrows, but a happy face. And there is our end result. And you'll notice the changes that we made to the underlying um, texture are being applied along with these animations. So in addition, so you've got a whole lot of control over the different uh, phenomes for, for uh, making mouths. We can give her fangs if we so wish. Um, give her upper fangs. And there you see we now have fangs on our person. And we've got some other options here. We can change in the background color. We can um, also set it to a background image if we so wished. We've got a bunch, and this is actually really cool. There are a bunch of animations already defined for these characters. So let's move her up a bit. And then you see we've got a standing, a bunch of idle animations. And then we've got running, we've got jumping, sliding, tired, victory, hurt, other hurt, and lost. So there is a ton of different animations built in here. And you'll notice there's this female animation, male animation, and then poses. Poses is for setting up your left hand, right hand. You can do your T pose. You can see the various different bones that have been defined here for you. And none of this would be useful at all to game developers if you couldn't do something with the generated mesh. And the good news is uh, you can. So in addition to, you can do rendering and, and setups and effects and all that. I don't really know the purpose there for the most part, but what I find most impressive is exports. Now I'm gonna do, go ahead and export this guy. I'll use the original texture quality and we'll export that guy out. And let's save that to my desktop like so. All right, so now what do we do with this guy? And that is one of the challenges. Why do I have, okay, there we go. Ah, uh, so it should be here somewhere. Uh, there we go. So this is a VRM file. It's used for their online virtual um, characters. But what we do is go in here and change VRM to GLB, which is uh, the T, oh, I can't come up with the acronym. Basically the uh, OpenGL, open source is the WebGL trans, ah, the acronym is not coming to me, drive me nuts. But once we've gone ahead and translated that, go ahead and double click it. And here you see it export it out into your 3D program of choice. In this case, this is uh, MBuilder. Now, as is the case with all exports, you're going to have the occasional glitch bringing things out. When I export these GLB files into, oh, maybe I can just fix it here. See if the repair repairs it. Because in the past, I've actually, into 3D Builder, I've gotten some great, great results. And then you can take 3D Builder, or you can also open this up in uh, like Paint 3D or whatever. But in theory, oh, GLTF. Ah, I came up with the acronym, finally. The GLTF format is um, an open source format. It's getting promoted in a variety of different game engines and content creation tools. Blender has an importer. Um, Unity has an importer available. Uh, Godot can open the file format. Now the problem is every time I have actually tried, it has uh, blown away completely. It, 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 so as is kind of the joy of getting things out of these kind of programs, it's always the most painful part if I'm honest. So here we are back to, this is the extracted uh, version of the EXE. So when you download Vroid, it's about a half a gigabyte in size total. And we're going to launch it again, because now I'm going to show you the newest, biggest feature that kind of makes Vroid much more useful to a variety of people. Because so far, if you wanted to create characters for your game in the anime style, uh, this was very, very good at creating female characters, but that's kind of where it ended. So now what we've got, we can create a new avatar from scratch. Say new avatar, and you've got a choice between a girl or now a boy. So you can now make male characters using Vroid as well. Now once this loads up, it's going to be the exact same process, exact same editor. The only thing that you're going to find different, once again, between the male and the female process, so it's the same hair editor. Um, so if I want to draw hair on this guy, I can do so like that. But it is the same basic tools you're using across the board. The biggest thing that was different is kind of previewed at earlier on. When you come in here, you go to the animation poses, there are different animations for male characters. So that is kind of it, but this is a pretty big deal. So if you wanted to use this as the base creator for your uh, characters for your anime style game, well, as long as you were creating, um, let's say, uh, female game only, which I guess many people might be, uh, it was kind of useful, but very limited by the lack of male characters. This new addition of male characters and male animation definitely does make this tool a whole lot more useful. Now, I can't go into a lot more detail than that, because as I mentioned, this guy is 100% documented in Japanese. The the places where you can publish and download other people's work. Again, it's all Japanese stuff. There's a huge community out there though, and they can share. you can share and download uh, the files that are used here. If you search for it, you will find Vroid to Unity export. It is possible. Uh, 
And then there's some things about bringing it into Unity and then exporting it as FBX for use somewhere else. So your workflow can change. You don't need to just rename to GLB files. There are other workflows for getting your characters out of Vroid. And apparently, and this is a third party hearsay because I can't read Japanese, but apparently more exporters are in the works. So hopefully we'll be able to export directly to like FBX or uh, Blend or other formats like that in the near future and gets rid of that whole intermediary step. But if you're looking to create a character um, in the anime style, in 3D, I, you just can't beat this, especially again, for the fact that it's free. Now, if you wanna get into the license conditions, the license file is here. And um, yeah, I didn't really go through it that much because first off, it's, it's not formatted particularly well. And second is my eyes kind of started bleeding. So I can't tell you 100% what you can use this for. Most of it's, most of what I saw here was actually attribution to other tools that they actually used to create this. I don't see any huge uh, issues here, but there are some weird things. Is As this is distributed in Quebec, Canada, some of the clauses in this agreement are provided below in French. And then we go into French. And so we have some very uh, detailed license and so I, I didn't get through it. It just made my eyes start to bleed. So if you are going to use this commercially in your own game, I would highly recommend you get somebody that speaks or can read Japanese to go through the licensing conditions for you just to make sure that it is uh, unhindered by anything. But as far as I know, it is. It's a completely free to use tool and it can create some very, very cool results very, very quickly. And again, I also really wish I could tell you how to go about creating clothing, but I haven't found any documentation on that subject and, and obviously if you're going to be creating a game you're going to want to be able to do more than right right now you can texture your clothing so we can go ahead and we can change out like the pants we can make the pants um yellow and i don't actually don't know what we're updating and we can change the texture that's being used on the pants and we can change all the texturing materials we can even once again draw so here we are looking at his tie and if we'd rather have had his tie be blue we could have just came in here oops i painted around it and paint the whole thing blue and you'll see the results in real time. So we can customize it, but you're obviously gonna to wanna to be able to bring in some kind of geometry that bring in the different character outfits and dresses and styles and so on. And I'm sure there's a way to do it. It's just unfortunately, my lack of language skills means I can't tell you. So maybe one of you guys, if one of you guys is familiar with the software and you know the process of bringing in your own materials, or if you know if there are any licensing gotchas, please let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, that is Roid Studio Revisited. Um, it's very cool and that's i guess why i've looked at it twice and again the first time the big limitation was it was female only so that would have knocked a lot of it would have made it kind of useless to a lot of people now you can create avatars of uh either gender and a lot more flexibility plus it's a bit more polished better performing and so on and so forth so it is definitely a cool program worth checking out and i will make sure that that link is down below um so yeah hopefully you found that useful talk to you all later goodbye